One of the most iconic props in our Diary of a Wimpy Alien parody series is the egg Greg uses to distribute all his facehuggers. But eagle-eyed viewers may have noticed that sometime between the filming of Diary of a Wimpy Alien 5 The Last Claw and Greg Responds Volume 6, the original egg prop vanished. It hasn't appeared in a main diary episode since, and the egg in the background of Greg Responds was replaced with a much cruder stunt double egg we used in War Dog days. This stunt double is just a spray-painted oversized plastic Christmas light bulb, but the original egg was a far more detailed paper mache creation. Given that Greg's life is about to get a lot more complicated starting in Wimpy Alien 8, we figured it was time to build him another hero egg prop. So thanks to your support on Teespring buying Wimpy Alien merchandise, we were able to make that happen. And we thought you'd like to see some insight into the crafting process. So back during production on the first Wimpy Alien video, I was in charge of a few different props and things. I made Greg's safety patrol vest. Uh, I actually made an acid spray rig that hooked him to the mask so that water would shoot out of Greg's face. And I made the first alien egg. We didn't know at the time this was gonna be a series. Everything was really rushed. Uh, I was pretty happy with it, but I kind of wished it could have been a little more detailed. It was made basically entirely out of paper mache and paint, and it was used in pretty much every video that called for one of Greg's xenomorph eggs. And then I was watching one of the recent Greg Responds videos, and I noticed they didn't have the regular egg in the shot. They were using the stunt double egg. Shortly after that, I heard from Will. The original egg went missing, and no one has any idea what happened to it. He asked, could I make another one? So let me show you how I turned Easter eggs into alien eggs. The original egg was a really simple design. It was just paper mache over a balloon and then painted. And actually I was planning to do the exact same thing for the new egg and just do more detail on the paint until I got to the store and I realized, oh man, it's April. Easter's right around the corner and they have all these huge plastic eggs available for sale. So I got a set of nesting Easter eggs. This is the smallest one, but I used the two larger ones because these, they're hard plastic. This is going to be way more durable than the original prop, which was just hollow paper mache. So I actually made two eggs this time, and that was at the suggestion of my wife, Audra, who does Greg's voice. Boom! She said, since I've got two eggs already at two different sizes, might as well just make two so that they have different options because sometimes Greg needs to pull one out of a backpack or someplace small, so that way there's a smaller egg now if it's needed for that kind of shot. The first thing I did was wrap duct tape all the way around the center of the egg where the two halves connect, and that way it wouldn't pop open or come apart while I was working on it. Then I taped a small straw wreath to the bottom of each egg to act as a base, and that way it would have some support and stand upright. To create the petal-like lips on the top of the eggs, I actually just used some plastic bendy straws. I cut those and taped them on top right where they needed to be. Once everything was assembled, I got to work on the paper mache. And the paper mache is just strips of newspaper dipped in a mixture of water, flour, and glue that I covered the entire egg with. And once that dries, it just becomes a nice, hard outer shell. An egg shell, if you will. Once they were completely dry, I took the eggs outside and I spray painted them with just a base coat of paint. I chose to use a hammered metal paint because this gave it a little bit more of a scaly textured finish. Once the spray paint was dry, I brought them back inside and got to work on painting all the details. First, I used a paper towel to dab on some dark green paint. Uh, I was careful to still let that base coat of copper show through though, just to make sure it had a lot of texture. As I moved on to lighter and lighter shades of green, I switched over to using paint sponges because these have a little bit more texture to them and they were a little smaller so I could just add little hints of green sort of speckled throughout. To really give it some detail, I took some paint brushes then and I hand painted all these little veins all over the egg to give it that sort of organic feel like this is some kind of a living alien thing. And the last thing I painted were the lips on the top of the egg, and I wanted to give it that sort of pink, fleshy color, similar to the alien eggs in the alien films, uh, and to really add detail to it, once I was done painting all of that, I added some gloss to it by using glossy Mod Podge and just putting it all around the opening and kind of dripping down the sides to really give it this just gross, oozing vibe. And the end result is two brand new xenomorph eggs that Greg can use to bring many more horrible face huggers into the world. Thanks, John. So you might be asking yourself, what will Greg need this for in future episodes? We wouldn't want to spoil anything, but let's just say some of his greatest hits are about to come back to haunt him. Thank you so much for watching, and be sure to like and subscribe and hit that bell notification icon to stay up to date with Anu Films. So if you want to help us enhance our videos with more cool stuff like this, buy a t-shirt from our Teespring store. You can get 20% off with this promo code. See you next time.